Hello everyone, welcome back to Chill Deal Trades, the most accurate stock market channel on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by the video. Sorry I couldn't make a video on Monday. A little bit of a car accident happened. Um, everyone's safe, everyone's fine. Fine, but uh, just give me an update there. But uh, today we're going to be talking about Ford. Because Ford had a killer earning, so we really want to look at what the earnings say, why it's reacting the way it is, and then dive into the charts to figure out where the stock could be headed. Um, please like, subscribe, and comment. I want to know your thoughts on Ford. If you're a buyer, if you're a seller, let me know. So the first thing you want to jump into is earnings. So Ford shattered Wall Street's earnings expectations, raises guidelines for the year on new vehicle demand. So let's break down kind of what happened. So first thing, adjusted EPS, 51 shares adjusted versus 27 shares expected. This is, I would say, the most important stat, in my opinion. And the reason I say it's the most important is when we look at Ford, yes, they're a growth company. They're not a growth company, but due to their EV, we're wanting to see more growth. But I would say more importantly than anything, especially in where we're at right now, is that they're making profit. And earnings per share tells us a lot on the profit, not just the revenue. Because what's happening right now is we're having big chip shortages happening. We're having it impact a lot of companies, even outside of the auto industry. As we know, if you don't pay attention, GM reported and said they're experiencing really large supply chip issues that are having a big impact on revenue. Where Ford came in and said, you know what, we're not actually having as much of an impact as they are. And we actually did pretty well in our on our revenue for the quarter. But that's really important because even though costs are going up, we're seeing that Ford is still making a decent amount of money having such a great quarter. So analysts came and said, we know what's going on, so we're gonna price down earnings. But then what happened is Ford is actually, we're not being as impacted as you thought, and that's why the stock is ripping on earnings because of a couple of these numbers. The other thing we wanna look into is that they've adjusted full year earning guidance to 10 to 11.5 billion from nine to 10 billion. And this is really big because like I said, yes, we want Ford to make money, but with them really launching EV, really expanding um, their cars with what we've talked in past videos, because we've covered Ford quite a bit, um, is that they have cars sitting on lots. So be able to see them say, oh, you know what? We're getting the parts we need. We're still seeing car demand stay elevated for the most part. And we're actually raising guidance. That's another reason we're seeing great, um, I guess, response to the earnings. Um, and another thing kind of on that point is Ford reinstated their dividends. So this is really big. And so I, I don't really want to break down the nuances of the, of the dividend. The main thing I want to call out here and why this is such a big deal, because historically Ford is a value stock. And so what we've seen happen basically since COVID, Ford stock went to like four bucks. And I think what happened is a lot of new investors, a lot of um, in investors who typically wouldn't invest in Ford did or have because of partially to the EV, um, the hype around cars, the, the, the stock was really cheap. And so now that Ford has reinstated the dividend, what that brings in, that re that bring that re brings in, <laughs> weird sentence, the value investors. Because when you think of value investors, they're wanting to find names that the stock will go up. They're not expecting as much growth in terms of the stock price, but while that stock is moving up, they also get a, earn, a, a quarterly dividend. And so now that state has, or Ford has, has reinstated their dividend for, again from pre-COVID, I think some of the value investors could start creeping in potentially. Um, so now we have not just the new investors and the growth on the EV side that's happening for Ford, now we have the value investors and so those two people coming together is going to put more buying pressure on the stock long term so this is a really big win and when we compare it to gm gm has not reinstated their dividend yet and so this is something i mentioned on our friday night live streams guys please come by the friday night live streams every friday 7 30 p.m central time these are things we talk about we talk about all kinds of different stocks you ask questions and we t analyze it um, and this is something we talked about is this quarter, some stocks are going to, some companies are going to win, some are going to lose. And so another thing is seeing Ford do so much better than GM in terms of what's happening right now. 
people who are thinking about investing in GM are also going to be coming to Ford. And so even more buying power from GM is going to transition to Ford, which is another potential driver for the price going higher. One of the things I do want to bring up is, I would say, a potential negative if we look over the next couple years. Um, and I've talked about macroeconomics a lot on a couple of videos in the past about slowing growth, interest rates rising, how that could impact companies like Ford. So go back and watch those videos. But one thing I would say is Ford earnings sales fall, but not as much as feared. And so this is a negative in my my opinion, because what we see here is the company posted adjusted earnings of $2 billion, down 22% from the year earlier. So the stock, the company's not actually growing year over year. Obviously, this is partially due to the chip shortage, but I think there's other factors going on. I don't think the demand for cars is high as last year. I think personally, we're seeing a slow in demand for cars. Um, and as interest rates potentially start to go up at the end of next year, you know, we're looking more long term. That's making it more expensive to buy cars, X, Y, Z, all the different factors. Um, Ford has continued to make a lot of vehicles. They have slowed down and have, you know, started to go like on demand um, as you, you make your car online instead of going to a dealership. Those things are, I think, going to have a positive impact for, on Ford and they're kind of changing their business model to adapt to the consumer and how they purchase nowadays. But these are things we really want to keep an eye on because outside of a quarter or two, outside of maybe Q4 this year, those could have more long-term impacts if we continue to see year over year down. Um, and so the last thing I want to do before we get to the charts is institutions owning and buying. So one main thing I want to call out is Q2. We saw a lot of selling, sailing, selling, selling. That's a hard word for me to say. <laughs> but uh, we saw a lot of selling of Ford stock. And so I'm really curious in my mind, you know, I try to analyze why is this happening? Because we saw a couple really strong quarters and we saw a really big sell, sell quarter. <laughs> um, but when I go into the mind, we really think about Ford. And let's just bring up the charts now because... What we know about Ford is the stock has moved from $4 to $16. That is absolutely insane for the size of the company that Ford is. I do think that they're having a lot of good momentum, but that's an insane move. And so even if someone bought the stock back here, say at eight bucks pre-COVID or something, they're still up, what is that, 60%, which is insane for a company like this. So I do think we're having profit taking from bigger investors. I do think we're going to continue to have profit taking. And part of the reason I, I say that is when we look at big picture, and I mentioned this in my first Ford video I made months ago, I think it's like six months at this point. Um, whenever I think we were here, when was that? Back in May. I guess it only was in May when I made my first video, uh, which is not six months. But what I said is long term, we have a ton of resistance in the 16 to 19, or I would say 17 to $19 range. Because when we look at here, we see all this resistance. And if I'm honest with you, we're not just going to break above this and go to 20, 30, 40 bucks in the short term. That's not going to happen for Ford. It's too big of a company. It's not going to move like that. They have too many shares. That's just unrealistic when we look at the big picture for Ford. Right now, we're at about $17 on the news and after hours, which is a good win. But look at all this historical resistance. This is a really big deal. When you see things go sideways for a long time, so this is July 13 to September 2014, sideways action. And so when the price comes back into that range, it's going to have significant resistance. Tomorrow, we're probably going to have some peeps, some analysts come out and give upgrades to the stock, which might push a little bit higher. But when we come in, a couple things we really need to pay attention to on the big picture. So... Last time we made a video was right here, and I said, look for the five wave down. One, two, three, four, five. Could have bought there. And we were around this, this zone that I was telling people, this is probably a good zone to consider buying. Hopefully you did. Like I said, most accurate channel on YouTube, guys. I'm not making stuff up. Go back at the old videos and watch. But the main thing we want to pay attention to is this long-term trend line. So this is the current uptrend that we're in. 
as we see we kind of keep bouncing off that line and right now we're pulling away from that line quite a bit we do have this secondary line at a, a higher angle which you know now that it's pulled back it might pull back to that but long term this is the trend line we're looking at so assuming this goes up and goes it has to go sideways till july 22 if it won't come down uh if it if it's not to come down to retest that trend line my opinion it's going to be more soon than that and so just keep an eye if this is a price you're looking to buy at you know maybe it's a starter price at 17 dollars. you don't want to buy your full position for it i would say if you're trading it short term you know stay above 1650 because we have that really big resistance there around that range and if it does you know we could see a lot of buying action for the reasons i talked about earlier and we could come up and test this 18 range we might be able to get to 19 you know who knows so for a short-term trade maybe that but if you're if you're really thinking oh should i buy in really big right now i'm not your financial advisor but what we do know is we have this long-term trend line here and this is something we need to look for so you know saying that it's up here now um, it's up here you know it's going to come back some at some point and so if you're buying at 17 versus 15 that's a decent amount change so if you're going to buy here keep an eye on it don't buy a full position but let's keep an eye on some other moving averages to figure out where we might want to take a peek at um, and so as you guys know in every video i talk about the 20 day so the 20 day we almost bounced off of it on today's bounce lower 20 day is at 1530 and so as the stock moves up if it continues to move higher this 20 day is going to continue to stay up and so for short term in terms of if this kind of bullish move continues to the upside because in the past what we see is we'll go on these little sprints higher for ford and then we'll break below the 20 day and have a little pullback and the pullback is typically to this long-term trend line and so right now we're pulling away from the 20 day and this steep angle honestly is not going to be able to last very long for Ford to move at this angle for a really long time is more unrealistic so when we come back here the stock moved from 11 to 16 and here we're at 12 to 17 and so having this really high angle honestly doesn't last very long and the higher angle Ford moves for the longer it does we're typically going to have a multi-week correction lower that's just typically what we see the higher move the higher the long gated to the downside doesn't mean it's going to you know break past our past support areas but we're going to have some downside so again like i said if you're buying here at 17 bucks be conscious of how much you're buying have your strategy say i want to own x amount of shares of ford okay buying on a 10 percent move higher i sh i only really want to buy 10 percent of what i eventually want to own in ford have a strategy when you're buying on 10 percent rips higher um, and just know the main thing to call out is this long-term trend line something we want to keep an eye on um, I would say that's all we really want to pay attention to I'll do more videos on Ford because I always do again this is one of our long-term picks for the channel we've been talking about it since May which was back here when I told you guys or June maybe I think it was around here I said guys probably not a good time to buy yet I think it was here actually it was back in may i said probably not a good time to buy yet we're probably going to get a pullback we've got a pullback at move higher and then here i made a couple videos in this range and i said guys this is probably going to pull back more we're in a corrective phase for um ford we're below the 20 moving average and we're kind of creating a five wave down and so those are things you're going to want um you're going to want to stay on this channel and because and we're going to continue to make update videos and i'll hopefully give you good price targets to keep an eye on um, that's all we have for you today. I, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you come back again on Friday for the live stream um, and I'll see you there.